Hi guys, hi Sandy, hi Rosie. I just tried to make the video and I had Sherm check to see how long it was I'm after I did the requests. And after I was finishing up the request, it was over 20 minutes long. And that was without doing any of the Bible video. So we are going to go through these really fast. We are just going to go through the names, if I can keep my mouth shut and not say nothing else about them. These people all need prayer for one reason or another. Okay? And um, all of them are the same except we got one new addition today. So it's best to write them down if you can't remember, which who could remember three little pages? I can't. I'm lucky if I remember four or five names. So, Josh Mollett, Vidalia Mercer and their unborn baby. Roy Mollett and Lori Mollett. Fuzz and Eric. Ona Whetstone. Sandy. Sherman Crabtree, Jewel Gill, Christopher Surback, Melly Ramey and her unborn baby boy, and her little daughter Kinsley, Debbie Lee, Mindy Gallimore, Cindy and Jim Welsh, Rhonda Karshner, and Jim Welsh is our new addition. Yeah, he's got whatever's going around. He got it off Cindy. Rhonda Karshner, Dora Carper, Abby and Jimmy Myers, Patty and Ernie Haynes, Joe Osborne, Kenny Wellman, Barb Post, Jen, Garnet, Randy Post, and April and Linda Thacker. Because I already said Jim, yes. Those people all need prayer for one reason or another, so let's begin with prayer. Brother Jesus and Father, Please watch all the people that we mentioned in our prayer list today. I know that you know their needs more, a lot more better than what we do. And you know what each and every single one of them needs and what is best for each and every single one of them. Because you know the future, Brother Jesus and Father, and we do not. We only ask you by what we feel and what we see right now in the present. But you know what's going to happen in the future, so you know what's best for each and every single one of us. So your will be done as always, Brother Jesus and Father. And I pray that you watch over today's Bible reading and the people watching and listening, listening to the day's Bible reading. And let it touch at least one of their hearts so that they go out and spread your word to someone else. And then that person will spread your word to someone else and on and on. And we love you, Brother Jesus, with all of our hearts and souls. And we love you, Father, with all of our hearts and souls. And it's stupid to say, but I hope you have a fabulous day in heaven. I know it's stupid to say because what kind of bad day could you have in heaven? Except I know you probably grieve a lot because of a lot, a lot of the horrible things your children do like not even acknowledging your existence. I can't even imagine the pain you go through. So I pray for you, Father. I just wish that I could go up there and give you a big hug. And just hold on to you and just hug you and never let you go. I'm just picturing myself wrapped in your arms right now. Just giving you a big hug and I just feel so loved and comforted I don't want to move. But we love you, Brother Jesus and Father, with all of our hearts and souls. And thank you for this beautiful, beautiful weekend. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, guys, let's get started with the Bible reading. We'll be reading in the New International Version, unless someone asks me otherwise, because someone has already asked me to read in this version, that's why I am, because I usually read the King James or the New King James Version when I'm reading it myself, but let's get started here. We are going to start with Luke. Come on, computer. We are going to start with Luke, chapter 17. Verses 11 through verse 37. Talking about two things today. And the first is Jesus heals ten men 
with leprosy. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. And we're ending Luke today with the coming of the kingdom of God. Once, one being asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, the coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Nor will people say, here it is or there it is, because the kingdom of God is in your midst. Then he said to his disciples, the time is coming when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. People will tell you, there he is, or here he is. Do not go running after them. For the Son of Man in his day will be like the lightning which flashes and lights up the sky from one end to the other. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation, which he surely was. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so also it will be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, drinking, marrying, being given in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. It was the same in the day of Lot. People were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But the day Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be just like this on the day of the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, no one who is in the housetop with possessions inside should go to get them. Likewise, no one in the field should go back for anything, because you won't need it. I added that part for myself, for you guys. It, I didn't add to the Bible, I'm just saying, you won't need it. Remember Lot's wife? Remember what happened to her, don't you? Whoever tries to keep their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life will preserve it. I tell you, on that night, two people will be in one bed, and one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding grain together. One will be taken and one left. Where, Lord? they asked. He replied, where there is a dead body, there the vultures will gather. Um, Lot's wife, when Sodom was being destroyed and Lot's family was leaving, God told Lot's family, do not look back at the city. Whatever you do, just don't look back. Just keep going forward. And Lot's wife turned around and looked back like God had told her not to, and she instantly turned into a pillar of salt. So, remember Lot's wife. And Jesus must, must, must suffer many things from this generation. That was the generation then. Look how they treat him now in this generation. No matter what generation we get, more and more and more, as the generations get, the more, there's always more and more people hating on God. Always. 
Why can't we ever just have a generation that is totally devoted to God, that loves the Lord with all their heart and soul, and wants to do the Lord's will? I guess we'll never find that kind of love until we go to heaven, when it's our time, God willing, of course. And let's go on to our psalm today, which is Psalm 84, for the director of music, according to the Giddeth, of the sons of Korah, a song. You're asking, who was Korah? Well, Korah was one of the three sons of Esau by his Hevite wife. If I said Hevite, right? Um, I'm trying, her name is hard for me to pronounce. I'm not sure if I'll pronounce it wife, wife, if I pronounce it right, but her name was like Obim, Obimlaba or something like that, but it was um he was Abimelech. One, no, it wasn't Abimelech. Abimelech is a man. I'm talking How about you pronounce it. I'm talking about Esau's wife, the he wife. It, it, it was like O H L I B A M A H something like that. Oh, Obim Obimabla oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um. Abimelech. I know what I'm talking about. Okay. Abimelech. <laughs> Esau was not married to Abimelech. Oh. It was one. It was his Hevite wife. Korah was one of the three sons of the Hevite wife of Esau. Esau was their dad. All right. So let's start with the sons of Korah. Psalm 84. If you want, you may sit back and close your eyes. I think it has, what, 18 verses? No, it has 12. Quit snoring. <laughs> Here we go. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart, my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose heart are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it place of springs. The autumn rains also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Oh, how God loves Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. I said that last part about God loving Zion, by the way. Um, Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on your shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I so agree. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield the Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. You may open your eyes if you had them closed. That was Psalm 84. And we're going to end today's Bible reading with Proverbs chapter 13, reading verses 5 and 6. Verse, Proverbs 13, 5 says, The righteous hate what is false, but the wicked make themselves a stench and bring shame on themselves. And Proverbs verse, or chapter 13, verse 6 says, Righteousness guards the person of integrity, but wickedness overthrows the sinner. Okay, guys, that was our Bible reading for today. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. I hope you guys have a blessed weekend. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, 
I'll see you guys all again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye guys. God bless.